Yo, guys, it's Kyle coming at you from Bain's Film Reviews. Today, I am sitting down with Ryan Moore, the writer, director, producer, and he even appears as an actor in his own film uh, of Marijuana Minutes. It's uh, a really interesting film. I don't really know how else to describe that without giving too, too much away. But uh, spoiler alert, I'm going to give a lot away as, as we move forward. Um, it's like the science fiction film about the pros and cons of marijuana use, and it's this... Uh, incredible satire of so many social and political things and i i really did enjoy it very very much uh so thank you so much ryan for sitting down with me i i genuinely appreciate it awesome yeah happy to be here and just from your initial thoughts i can tell you got it which is awesome awesome um, yeah happy to be here and and uh, excited to talk about it great yeah i haven't posted a review yet um i'm never really sure if i should post it before i talk to you guys or if after I talk to you guys, I don't know if I should just like surprise you because you don't know whether I like it or not when we sit down uh, or just I don't know. So I decided this time not to not to po not to post it first. And uh, but I think, like you said, you you kind of assume that I like it at this point, which is very true. Awesome. Um, but so before we get into the actual film, uh, how'd you get into filmmaking in the first place? Um, I feel like it's a it's not a remarkable story because it's so many filmmakers stories, which is that, um, you know, when I was in like middle school ish, mm. I started making really, truly terrible films, you know, and uh, I continued to do that through high school, making some some pretty bad movies, but learning every step of the way and and just loving the process and um, and watching tons of films Um and uh, just kind of digesting film constantly and then jumping from genre to genre and uh, at least with what I watch and, and kind mm -hmm. of diving in and wanting to know more and more about how they were made and um, wanting to know about the people behind the films too, that, that made the film. So right. um, I think just being a huge fan and, and really enjoying the process was what got me into it. Um, and then I got to college and uh, was like, ah, I have no other applicable skills. Let's roll with this. Well, that's fantastic. Like you said, it is a pretty familiar story, but it's it's a good story. I mean, I don't think we should discount the fact that other people share a similar experience because it it's film is fantastic and film is for everyone in, in a way that I don't think people that don't appreciate it can understand. So, And you kind of have to love it to be in it, you know? So I, I feel like that story makes sense because... If you don't love it, why would you ever decide to do this crazy thing? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love it. And I mean, I even question, like, there's days where, like, I don't even want to write a review today. I can't imagine dedicating my entire life to it. So kudos to you for knowing what you want to do, sticking to it, and, and being successful in doing it. So thank you. Yeah, of course. And then Marijuana Minutes. How, how did that idea come to be? And then how did it eventually come to life? Sure. So um, in college, I feel like I was still kind of finding my voice, but um, a lot of my favorite films, I, I love all kinds of films. So I always hate saying my, my favorite is this or my favorite is that, but mm. um, the films that I could go back and rewatch any day of the week, you know, anytime at any place in the movie um, tended to be these kind of goofy comedy films. Um, okay. Like I really loved, uh, I really like as a kid, my, my dad showed me airplane when I was pretty young. Okay. I loved airplane. Um, Mel Brooks movies were a big influence. Um, wet hot American summer was a big influence. Um, and, um, just by eventually after college, I kind of found that that was what I was drawn to write. Mm -hmm. I think I, I went through a brief phase in college where I thought I had to be more profound and um, and uh, I got past that quickly and um, oh, give me sorry give me one second yeah sorry about that so no, no um so yeah, so when I found my voice, I found that I really loved writing comedies, no matter what kind of comedy, but particularly kind of absurdist, goofy ones were, were up mm -hmm. my alley. Um, and uh, I was writing features and um, 
anyone that shoots their first feature, I think is crazy. My first feature script was terrible. Um, and it took me quite a few goes to get one where I was like, I feel confident that A, I can make this and B, I think it'll be good. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and then, so your, your lead character, Amy, and Re Rebecca's fantastic, but Amy is a very unique character. And I feel like she's not the type of character that many people would expect to be able to appreciate or fall in love with, or even, you know, be the lead of, of a film. So why did you land on Amy and why did you decide that she was the best, best type of person to tell this, to tell a, a story like this? Sure. So uh, great question. Um, so yeah, first off, kudos to, to Becca for killing it. Yeah. Um, she's an awesome actress. Um, and, you know, half the awards we won on the festival circuit were for her performance. And, Phenomenal. And for, for those of you who don't really know the festival circuit, they tend to favor melodramas. And a lot of the times it was, you know, five films selected and we're the only comedy there and everything else is kind of a darker drama or a melodrama. So um very proud that she picked up so many awards. Um, For sure. Definitely as the underdog. Um, so, yeah. So um, Amy is kind of a culmination of, a, a, has some traits from uh, the, the friendship between Amy and Clover is somewhat based on my fiance's friendship with her friend. Um, yeah. But, Amy's personality and traits are are kind of exaggerated traits of at the time of writing it what I really disliked about myself there was some of that uh some of that in there um and then she just kind of blossomed from there obviously very exaggerated but um yeah. that was kind of the basis of it was um was writing someone that really needed to kick it into gear um and I thought too, when I was writing it, that um, we see a lot of films where a character has to go through this arc, right? They, mm -hmm. they have to learn something. And that's something that's pushed on people time and time again, uh, especially in film school, is that your character has to learn something. Yeah. And I always liked characters that didn't learn anything, right? I think the important part is that they're presented with the opportunity to change. Mm -hmm. And then they say, nah, I'm good, which is kind of what Amy does. I mean, she does learn things throughout the film as well, but um, for some of the bigger issues in her life, um, she just learns to be comfortable with who she is to some degree. Um, but anyway, I thought that would that was a, a type of character I'd wanted to tackle when I was writing it, was a character who was going to be presented with a lot of opportunities for growth mm -hmm. and then kind of say, Nah, for better or yeah. worse. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you saw the uh the film Strays that just came out recently with uh Will Ferrell. The oh, yeah. the antagonist in that also doesn't grow. And I, I did an episode uh, about that with a friend of mine. Um and I really enjoyed and appreciated that he doesn't grow throughout. Like again, he's presented these opportunities to become a better person. And the reality is people in real life don't always become better people, they just stay the same. Right. Um, and I really appreciate that when when writers go, no, screw it. They're going to they're going to stay like this because this is this is real. This is honest. And so using Amy and presenting Amy in that way and having her develop just ever so slightly, but not so much to even say that she changes, um, I think is a very, very good choice. Um, and I think also to go off of you there that. um it works. It work definitely is easier for comedies, right? Because comedy is all about yeah. misdirection. So whatever you're yeah. setting them, you set the audience up with something, they feel like it's going this way, and then you flip it. So yeah. it's easier to have a redeemable character when they say no to change. It's also something funny. Yes, but. I because I think it's so. I think it's obvious, and I think even I was anticipating by the end she was going to be this changed person, and that she was going to have her aha moment. Um, and again, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily come. There are glimpses of that and there are moments where she obviously changes a little bit. But I, I like that she stays on this very linear path and doesn't change in this drastic way. Um, but I also want to step back because you mentioned that you you incorporated parts of yourself that you didn't particularly like at the time into Amy. It is that I mean, how, how, first of all, how do you do that? I mean, I don't know if I would be able to do that 
but also is there some sense of relief when you, you know, put that out into the world and people judge it in a, in a positive light? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I, I, definitely a little bit of relief there for sure. But, um, you know, I think all writers, when you're writing a screenplay or a book, whatever you're writing, you kind of have to beat yourself up a little bit to get through it because it is a kind of a monumental task. Um, and, um, you know, I beat myself up a lot about, uh, you know, being too lazy and not, not writing enough and not being regimented enough of my writing. And that kind of turned into the character Amy. Now she's not really chasing anything in particular, mm -hmm. but she's still doing the before part of, of not really kicking it into gear, not really trying. And she's very comfortable with um, her lifestyle. Yeah. And um, at the time I was not, I wanted to, to get something made um, that felt like a big step up. Um Wow, look at that. I'm the character who grew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I'm, well, I mean, it seems like it helped you in a lot of ways, which is fantastic. Um, Did it. And, and again, with comedy, I feel like a little self-deprecation is always is always nice. Yes, it's helpful <laughs> in comedy for sure. Um, and then so, I mean, it's a social and political satire in a lot of ways. Mar marijuana Minute is. Um, you are going to aggravate people. You're going to ruffle some feathers. You don't choose sides, sides, which I really enjoyed about it. You kind of make fun of every aspect of, you know, of life in general. How do you go into this and say, I don't really care what they think. I'm just going to make this and whatever they think they think I'm happy with this. Sure. Um, so I, I think in comedy, you, you kind of don't want to pick sides Right. Yeah. I, ha I have my own political beliefs and everything, but if you start putting that into the film, it's going to quickly not become a, it's going to quickly not be a comedy anymore. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think there are moments where I lean more one direction than another in, in terms of what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think it's fun to point out the extremes, right? Like the, yeah. um, I'm thinking of the scene where they're, um, where they're talking about appropriation Right. Yeah. There's there's kind of both extremes in that scene. There's yes. like um, there's a character who's completely oblivious to to what he's doing, and there's characters that are um, very gung ho, and then that character flips and becomes um, overly self aware of every little thing, you know. So yeah. I thought that was a fun way to kind of show like, you know, this is the complicated issue and here's how it presents itself to the world and yeah. let's just laugh at that a little bit because it is kind of silly at times absolutely um, the extremes at least yeah I, again i really enjoyed that my biggest issue with films is when it's so when they're so obviously pointed in one direction and you ostracize half of your potential audience when you do that and if that's your goal then that's okay i mean I don't think anything is off limits when it comes to filmmaking, but for me personally, it becomes difficult when it's just one way, even if it's something that I agree with, just when it's, you know, it's just, totally. it's just aggressive on one side, it becomes too much. Totally. I think people don't like being, uh, being preached at, you know, absolutely. Um, you know, and there's definitely been, um some comedians i've seen where it's like i agree with everything you're saying but let's let's calm down you know yeah <laughs> but, move so on I get that yeah yeah um and then so something else i i noticed and as soon as i say this word i know that other people will be like oh he's saying that this was terrible but i'm not saying that at all because as, again it's a satire and every one of these actors at one point or another overacts they do too much they're too in your face they're over the top, but that's pretty, I mean, that's expected in satire almost. You see that often, but so my question is, why did you decide to abide by this quote unquote rule? Um, and why did you decide that this was the best course of action for your, for your actors, for your characters, and then for the sure. film as a whole? Um, so something that we talked about pretty much in every facet of the production. So with the actors, I would, I would always try to get them to give me a little bit extra, a little bit extra. Um, mm -hmm. But also with like the costuming and the production design, 
with everything involved in the the tone and look of the film, um, one word I kept using was cartoonish. I was like, okay. these characters are cartoon characters. Mm. They're not they're not real people. <laughs> they are they are exaggerated. They are big, and um, you know they they wear the same outfits with slight alterations. Um, they live in these um, kind of comic like panel <laughs> areas, you know, it's all the, all the frames are relatively flat for, for locations mm -hmm. and the characters are kind of moving, moving through them like that. So cartoonish is the, is the, the tone and the best way I could can explain that choice. And again, okay. that, you know, from everything from the performance to the production design and costuming. Yeah, I think, think the two that stood out to me the most was Clover. Obviously, she's very exaggerated, especially when she's driving. Um, and then I'm drawing a blank, uh, the drug dealer's name, where he sits on his couch with he's spread eagle all the time. Oh, Trevor. Yeah, Trevor. Yeah, he just sits there with his legs spread and, you know, leaves very little to the imagination. So those two things were what stood out to me the most. But again, it's everyone at some point throughout the film. And it's it's very important to it because it while it's it's cartoonish, it makes the point more obvious and more accessible. So it makes it much more real, honestly. Um, and then kind of keeping in that vein of what's real and what's not real, it chose to make this a sci fi. Uh, spoiler alert, it's about a, a weed pen that can make you go back in time. I mean, that's extreme in a lot of ways and i think that you have a very solid foundation with your story where you could have avoided that and still have gotten your point across still have had great acting still have had a lot of really good things why did you decide to take it that direction and and make it a sci-fi uh so one of the things that i was kind of asking myself um it was after i had so i uh I come from writing a lot of sketches and I feel like that's kind of prevalent in the film too. Mm -hmm. A lot of the scenes isolated are kind of sketch like, but, um, yeah. um, oh, where was I going with this? What was the question again? Sorry. Uh, um, so why did you decide to make it a sci-fi rather than right. just keep everything very realistic? Um, so as I was writing the sketches, I was writing some sketches first with the characters. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a sketch with, with Amy and Clover, and that was when they were really popping on the page for me. And I really liked Amy as a character. Um, and one of the things that crossed my mind and another sketch that I followed up that sketch with was her with this ability to, to rewind time. It wasn't originally with a, with a weed vape, um, okay. but that just came into play later. But um, the thing that I thought was funny about it and the thing that I liked about it was giving... Um, giving a superpower to someone that would never do anything useful with that superpower, right? Okay. They're just using it for, for self gain and benefit. And, um, and again, the story is about, I, I focus on characters more than anything else, but I thought it was a fun plot device to use throughout the film mm. to kind of see how Amy utilizes this superpower. And again, just kind of subverts audience expectations over and over again with how yeah. she's yeah i mean i i felt like i had the gist of the film in the beginning and then when she gets this uh weed pen i'm like i don't know where where the hell this is going <laughs> going now but i like that again you're you're uh i have certain expectations and you are you know shifting away from them constantly throughout the film and i i really do enjoy really do enjoy that about the film Awesome. Thank you. But then, so one of my favorite parts of the film, and I'm going to preface this by saying that I often refer to myself as the worst film critic. I have never seen Night of the Living Dead, um, but but I understand the gist of it and I understand what its purpose is in film and, and you know, social and political circles. It's such an important part of the film because it it strengthens your narrative and it strengthens the satire and it does so much for it. But again, you have this foundation that I feel like doesn't necessarily need it to be successful. So why did you choose to use it more than just a couple times? I mean, you constantly reference this and you even see footage from the film. So why why choose to use that? Um, sure. So 
a part of this answer is kind of unremarkable. Um, okay. a, the original scene that I wrote, I wrote that Trevor was watching something and I was like, I'll figure that out later. Um, and then eventually uh, it became Night of the Living Dead, um, mostly because I wanted to pay homage to other indie films that were made on, you know, whatever that level is below a shoestring, you know, <laughs> under $50,000. Yeah. Um, and I've always been a sucker for those kind of films, right? I love Night of the Living Dead. I love how it's scrappy. I love how it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that there is some deeper meaning behind it still. Um, yeah. I love Clerks, you know, and again, I love how it's not perfect. I love how, um, how they used all the resources they had around them and all those kind of films were an inspiration and night of the living dead is in there a little bit more, but mm -hmm. you know, um, there are references to clerks. We see the, the quick stop sure. in a shot. Um, and there are references to some other indie films as well that I'll let the viewers pick out as they watch it. But there's, yeah. there's a few of them. Well, again, I think it's a very good choice. And I, I wish that I had seen that before watching this. Um, but I say that to myself all the time because there's so many things that I still haven't seen. Um, but I, I digress. I don't I don't want to harp on that because I'll drive myself nuts. Uh, but so this again, I, I, I don't know if I've said it enough. I don't I don't think I can say it enough times. This really is a great film. I saw a title Marijuana Minutes and I thought, like, what is this? I don't I'm going to watch it. I'm going to do my best to enjoy it. And, and it is what it is. If I hate it, I hate it. I'm still going to sit down with you and we're going to discuss it. But I ended up really, really enjoying it. And I'm, I'm thrilled that I did. One, it makes this conversation a lot easier. Sure. <laughs> but, but two, it just, I mean, I don't want to sit down and hate a film. I, I want to enjoy it. And it had, it had everything you need in a, in a film that, and I think everything that you need to make a film successful. So kudos to you again. And with that, I want other people to be able to watch it and be able to find you and see future projects. So where can they find Marijuana Minutes? And then where can they find you? Cool. Um, so yeah, you can follow us on Instagram to see what um, sites we're coming out to. Right now we are up on uh, Vudu and a bunch of On Demand. So I think Fios On Demand, Comcast, Spectrum, something like, I don't know. Check mm -hmm. your TV, it might be on there. Um, but it's on Voodoo for sure. And then we're coming to Amazon uh, very soon. So we're awesome. excited about that. Um, you can follow us on Instagram, marijuana underscore minutes underscore film. Um, we're on Facebook, marijuana minutes. Um, yeah, I'm on Instagram. If you want to follow me, you can. Uh, Rai Rai Moo Moo, R Y R Y M O O M O O. Um, and yeah, yeah, working on some new scripts and hope to be diving into another another feature soon. That's fantastic. So my next question was going to be, what are you working on next? Do you want to go into any more detail or you want to keep that under wraps for now? Sure, I'll, I'll go in a little detail. So um, someone I met on the f festival circuit, um, I'm collaborating with, um, we'll see if it happens. I'm hoping it does because I really like the script. Mm -hmm. um, and we're kind of teaming up on the script at the moment, but uh it's it's kind of clerks with aliens um, okay. but instead of an alien invasion the invasion has already happened and okay. it's just like here's life <laughs> um but it's a comedy and then um well, one thing we heard from most of the distributors we um approached was that the part of the reason they approached us was there's not enough there, you know there's not there's it's not an oversaturated market with stoner yeah. films. Yeah. So um, I started writing another stoner film. Okay. Um, I think the the name kind of sums it up, but it's called um, Cannabis Cannibals. It's a <laughs> it's another uh, it's an it's another plot device weed movie where the 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 weed um, gives you the munchies so bad you eat everything in sight until you start eating everyone in sight. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, another goofy goofy stoner movie but working on having some some themes in there with with some some meaning as well. Awesome. Well, please be in contact with those. I'd like to watch those as well. Cool. Um, and then I know that you said you don't like to pick favorite movies. That's kind of why this is my favorite question because sure. there's people on the spot. 
what are some of your favorite movies and what's the best thing you've seen? I'll say this year. This year. Okay. Um, so I'll give you, can I give you a top five? Sure. Absolutely. All right. So top five in no particular order, but movies that have always stood out to me. Uh, Young Frankenstein. Oh, yes. Love Young Frankenstein so, so much. Um, I love uh, Royal Tenenbaums. It's my favorite Wes Anderson movie. Okay. Um, Harold and Maude has always been one of my favorites. Dark, satirical, really goofy at times, though. Um, um, I'll throw a drama in there. Uh, I, I love There Will Be Blood, which okay. you probably already know because it, it makes an appearance in the film as well. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I'll throw in throw in my favorite satire uh dr strange love i'll throw that in okay there. very very and, cool and i think uh favorite movie i've seen this year um i feel like last year was such a big movie year like where that's, i was that's what i said i thought yeah i, I had, thought last year was fantastic i had so much trouble picking a favorite last year mm -hmm. um like i loved everything everywhere i love banshees of inashirin um, there was just a, a ton of films I really loved last year. I love Barbarian. Um, but I will say this year, my favorite might be Barbie. Interesting. Yeah. Very and, interesting. And, and over Oppenheimer. <laughs> but wow. Yeah, I loved uh, um, the main criticism of Barbie I've heard is that it's too on the nose. And that's what I loved about it. So <laughs> okay, that's where Very I come from cool. that from that one. But um yeah, looking forward to a lot of the the award season movies. So, yes, yeah, so am I. I, I. I am disappointed every year because there's always this one random film that I want to see win a lot, and they never do, which is okay. Um, I still love them regardless. But uh, like the the film that I loved so much last year was The Menu, and that I got love the Menu. Yeah, that, that got, got shafted. No recognition whatsoever. Yeah, The Menu was great. Yes. Oh man, that it was a big eat the rich year. I also love Triangle of Sadness. That was a great film. Another too. great one. That one got some recognition. That got some some nominations yeah. and well deserved for sure. Yeah, that was a fun. So, what's your favorite movie? I got to know. I know um, I'm lingering on the call now, but <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. I have plenty of time. Um, so I always I always say Empire Strikes Back. I always cool. say that's my favorite. Um, and I give the same reason any time anyone asks. Um. I, beside it being a fantastic film, I genuinely love it. I think it's beautiful in a lot of different ways. It was, my dad took me to see Star Wars when they were re-released in theaters just before the prequels came out. And he was super busy, worked night shifts, didn't get to see him a ton. And he hates Star Wars on top of it. And he took me to see them anyway, like the midnight showings. So just so much nostalgia, just nice. really good memories with those films and Empire of the the original trilogy is i think just hands down the best the best one awesome yeah okay but cool. i but i like everything um not i like everything i like all genres i'd be lying yeah. if i said i liked everything um but my list goes on and on and on my top four remains the same even though it's a lie at this point i don't know what my top four is um but yeah so cool and um I don't know if you do the the film fest stuff at all, but um, I'm bit. going I'm going to Indie Street in Red Bank next week. Okay. Opening night movie looks great. It's called I Love Movies, and uh, okay. So if you're around, come on out. I'll I'll see you there. Fantastic. I will reach out and then, uh we'll exchange some information. Cool. All right, and Ryan, thank you so much. I know that I'm sure you're busy. You have scripts to write. You have things to film. You're still on the festival cir fe festival circuit. Um, you have so much going on and just spend, you know, half an hour with me is awesome. So thank you. Thank you. Fantastic job on the film. And I look forward to everything moving forward. Awesome. And thank you. Appreciate you taking the time to watch the movie and to really watch the movie and, and yeah. appreciate it. And uh, I'm, I'm glad you had a fun time with it. And I look forward to reading the review. Fantastic. We'll be in touch. Cool. Catch you later. All right. Have a good one.